Cash Color Camp is a high level of conversation on live hiphopdaily.tv and this episode is sponsored by Atlantibus Clothing. Everything from our Drug Lord collection, Atlantibus collection, and our Return to Vipers collection are all are all available for purchase right now. And if you are watching the show, you know that between 9 o'clock and midnight tonight, if you use promo code Cash Color Cannabis, you get 10% off your entire order. And that's not for scammers. And I have to say that because we were just talking about scammers a second ago. <laughs> that's not for scammers. Don't, don't, don't run up a bunch of numbers on the website. Like, that's not going to make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um, I got a great guest in the building. We were just having the most random conversations offline. I wish we were still we were still taping that because um, I almost told you the story about when I accidentally got caught in a shoplifting thing, and I ended, walked away with an Eddie Bauer jacket. But um, hey, Jamela. Oh, nice. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I love Jamela. stories like that just because like Eddie Bauer is gonna be fine. Eddie Bauer's fine. I didn't think. Let me give y'all the story real quick before we get into this thing. All right, so I'm downtown Boston. I'm kicking it with my homeboy, right? We just got done playing basketball. And actually, we're not in Boston. We're in South End at this moment. If you've been to South End, South End is all these high-end stores. It's a really nice area. We walking around, and he says, all right, so I'm going to stop by the Eddie Bauer store because I'm going to buy something. Odd to me because we're 15. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like, what you, you going to buy? So we go through the store. He keeps telling me, just stand right here, stand right here. Not paying attention to nothing this man is doing. We walk outside this store. He goes, yo, here. He grabs me, he gives me an Eddie Bauer jacket. I say, what's this for? Being a lookout. Like, look out for what? Give me a heads up when y'all be doing crime. Like, you know, let me know if, so I can be either tell you if I want to be down or not. Like, you can't be just be um, convincing me to do something without telling me the whole story. Oh, my gosh. I remember I got caught shoplifting once. And it was because all, like, I went to a predominantly white high school and and middle school and elementary school but uh, when i was in high school i was on the cheerleading team and i was like one of the only black cheerleaders on this cheerleading team and those girls love to steal they love to go to macy's <laughs> those white girls love to go to macy's and shoplift and like nobody and they could just walk out and nobody suspected them but you know like i wanted to be friends i wanted to fit in and like you know i actually got away with it but then my mom found it in my closet and was like where did you get this and it was a whole thing, and I had to, you know, admit. And she was like, "You're, we don't, we can't do that. No, we we can't do no. that." No, I was like, "Okay." I was with a girlfriend in high school, and she got caught shoplifting. Um, it was fingernails. She got caught, <laughs> shot, caught, shot, caught, caught shoplifting fingernails in Woolworth. And the funny part is, is how they got caught because they was walking out, and um, so the security guard saw us. He grabbed all three of us. It was me, her, and her friend Tracy. Grabbed all three of us. It was going on. He passed them down. He sees all the fingernail stuff, and they goes, "I right, so you stealing." And then they see money in their pocket because we had just, we was working these jobs called ABCD in Boston where they used to give summer jobs to all these kids. So we had just got paid. So literally right. there was $200 on all three of us at this time, which is like <laughs> $2 million to us at this, at, this, at this age. And he goes, and you got money? You still stole? <laughs> like you still stole I these fingernails? I buy them. But I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, it's, it's the thrill. I, 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 I get it. I feel like I'm missing out <laughs> something right now. So I do have a guest tonight. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know you, please introduce yourself. My name is Jamila Zara Williams, <sighs> and <laughs> I'm the founder of HiHowAreYou.com. That's H I G H how are you .com. Jamila is actually one of the most she's a Dos Equis person like she's easily one of the most interesting human beings Aww. and I found this out the Thank last two you. nights when I've been researching you I'm like Jesus like she I, I found you on a podcast about comedians and then you're on a podcast talking about RuPaul's drag race <laughs> and then I noticed that you have a, 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 a mention in gr grass is greener I'm like what the, she, she does yeah. everything I mean I'm interested in everything yeah. I'm interested in everything it's I can't think of anything that I'm not interested in. <laughs> like, I just, everything, like, and, and I'm very easily influenced. I mean, that's like, a, there's pros and cons to that. But, you know, we were just talking about cryptocurrency and Dogecoin. And I'm like, I want to know more. I want to know more. I've always been that kind of person. And, you know, the RuPaul's Drag Race thing, it was like a friend of mine had a RuPaul's Drag Race podcast. Yep. And I was like, oh, well, let me start watching so I can, like, listen to your podcast just to support him. And then I started watching the show and I got into it. Like, I just, it's very easy for me to get into things that are new to me. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> so, so I know that you were, you're a native of D.C., correct? Yes. So, I'm from D.C. Are you from Boston? I'm from Boston, Mattapan. You know what's so funny about Boston is, like, I feel like Boston is one of those places that people have, like, not tried to sell me on. Really? I'll yeah. Sell, can we sell you on it? Okay. Here's, here's, <laughs> okay, like. I've never been to Boston yeah. and I because of what I've heard about Boston I really have no desire to go I hear that it's like 
it can be racist there's not like a great nightlife it's not very fun um if you're black like the nightlife part like but again it depends on what you're trying to do and i always tell people like what are you trying to do and also are you actually in boston like i meet a lot I'm of trying people to have a good time i'm trying to go to a city i mean any city i'm trying to go to a city have a good time eat good food Oh, I got you. I got you. I'm definitely about to sell you on Boston. Okay. All right. So me, I'm born and raised in Boston, Mattapan neighborhood. Mattapan, what up? Oh, are you from? Are you? Are you? What? Like, how far are you away from New Edition? How far am I away from like age or like? No, or, no, or, like like, space? like region. Region? Like, oh, so Mattapan is here. They were from um, Roxbury, actually Orchard Park. So it's okay. not that far. Like my mother owned a house in Devon Street on Devon Street, so it was actually even closer to where. Her other house was, gotcha. but um, you know, not that far, not that far at all. And also, shout to New Edition. Whenever people <laughs> ask me about why I don't have a Boston accent, I say, well, tell me who in New Edition has a Boston right, accent, right? Right. And then go to New Kids on the Block, and you see they have one. There's yeah, a difference. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's two sides of Boston. There's black side, and then there's the white side. But um, the thing I love most about Boston growing up was um, we have a it's history on top of history. You know, you know mm -hmm. that part from American history. Like, you'll hear a lot about the American Revolution. But you, when you start finding out the black history that's in Boston, from even stories about Malcolm X, some stories about Dr. King, stories about Sammy Davis Jr., A. Yeah. Philip a. Philip Randolphs, like, just Mel, even down to these younger people, like Mel King's younger, Mel, young, like Mel King. It's like, it's so much history when, it's, when, you can, when you really dig down into it about what black people added to this city, what black people brought to this city, um, what black people put up with, like even busing. My brother went through the busing process. That was a whole mess wow. in itself. Yeah. But to know that happened and know you have people who could tell you the whole story about it is dope. Um, when you think about food and all that, man, Mattafan, Roxbury, Dorchester, come down here and get you some good Haitian food, some good Jamaican okay. food. Like okay. pull up, there's all those little small restaurants. Like it's just- it's, Is there like a, a, a decently sized immigrant population in- In Boston? In Boston, yeah. Yeah, pick the group. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay. pick See, the I don't know these pick things. Pick the group. Like I could tell, like I was laughing with my friend Ty because I remember when Haitians first came because I remember being in fifth grade and this kid came to school and he had a suit on. <laughs> and we was all looking like, the hell this kid got a suit on? Was his name like John claude Yes, it was. I was about to say his name was John Paul Baptiste. His name oh, was John Paul I... Baptiste. And he sat down in the back of the class with a suit on. And we was like, who the hell is this kid with a suit? <laughs> and then before you know, you start seeing whole pockets of Haitians and Cape Verdeans. We have a ton yeah, of Cape Verdeans, nice. Somalians. Like, I'm going to talk to you about Boston because I'm hella proud of Boston. Like, I'm I mean, that kid. honestly, that's how DC, I mean, I feel like. When you see DC in movies, you only see the the National Mall, the Capitol. Yeah. Uh, you see like all, a lot of DC movies are like politically driven, or you're watching like you know the police or protests or all that stuff, and it's like that's just not the DC that I know. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I don't. There's when I was in DC, there was really never a reason to go downtown to all of that stuff. It was like all the good shit was you know in uh northeast and southeast and southwest it's like you know and it's and it's changed so much you know i when i was in i i lived in dc most of my life and then i moved to new york city when i was 27 and i've lived i lived in new york city for eight years until i uh harlem i lived in harlem i lived on 142nd and broadway and i lived there for eight years and then i moved to atlanta in december this this past december so like i'm new to atlanta but um growing up in dc it was just you know i wish they would show the part of dc that that i love i wish they would show like you know the go-go music and i wish they would show you know um just, at, just i mean mumbo sauce and i mean people people know about it but yeah. it's like i wish there was like you know, a, a show that like captured just the his because like black people have been there forever, and there was like you know this large black home ownership where we owned all these like row houses and everything, and like you know there were lots of affluent people, and um, you know, a lot of them moved to you know um, PG County, Maryland, and everything. But it's just like DC has such a rich black cultural history and i would love to show more of that like i love you i just love touch my heart <laughs> i feel you because i wish boston was the same way like, yeah. like we keep being the boston people get to see is ben affleck um matt damon mark right. Wahlberg, boston yeah and i keep telling people if you get a, a sense of their boston their boston is savin hill dorchester is savin hill south boston like it's not right. mattapan it's not roxbury it's yeah. not where i came from like even who's right like now a local who's like a local music hero 
in from Boston? Boston? Yeah. I would say that everybody from New Edition. Oh, did you don't no, know? No, that we don't know. Oh, uh, um. Because, like, Bobby Brown, yes. Mr. Lift, for me, um, a lot of people don't know Gurus from Boston. Like, my, really? Yeah, from Gangstar. Yeah. Like, his, um, his dad was a judge. And my mother used to own, was well, still owns rental properties in the okay. city. And she used to have to deal with his, his father all the time. She'd always call him Judge Elam's kid. Like, she would never call him the rapper. That's Judge right. Elam's kid. So, there was Guru. That's funny. It was only recently that I found out that uh, DJ Premier was from Houston. Oh, yeah. I, I thought he was from New York. You would have thought so. I yeah. just <laughs> you would have thought just, so. I thought it, I was, you know, I assumed. But I embrace that, man. Like, yeah, Boston is one of them places that if you haven't been there for a, a, and spent any time, you would be confused about it. Like, I had a, mm -hmm. a, a person I interviewed. This is now twenty years ago, and she. Had, I told her I was from Boston. She said, "Yo, Boston is the most interesting place. Like, you can go talk to a hood nigga. You can go talk to anybody, and they'll be able to tell you about something." Right. And I said, that's another thing I love about Boston. People will tell you about something. Like, every, people are actively watching news. Like, yeah. And you'd be shocked. Like, some kid will just sit there and tell you, like, like I remember being a kid being able to tell you about um, Muammar Gaddafi and stuff. Like, we'd be, <laughs> oh, we'd be playing shit. kickball, and I'd look up in the sky and be like, you know, I'm just making sure that he's not dropping missiles on us. You know? Right, like, right. We was always that group of people, and I love like that about it. being from D.C. because there's so many embassies. I knew about a bunch of countries that, like, other people didn't know yeah. about. So I was, like, telling other kids about, like, a Laos and they're like that's a country and I'm like yeah <laughs> they're like Macedonia they're like wait that's a country I'm like yeah Ma you know like it's near Greece but so, yeah it's it's crazy it's like uh I guess we got a rep for our our hometowns the hardest yeah yeah you got the to. little racist you got to, I'll definitely take you on a trip to Boston if you ever were in the city but I also say this too down. we got a lot of people now who are living they kind of work in Boston, but they live outside the city. Right. And I said, that's another thing that gives us always a bad feel. Like, because if you live in the suburbs, you don't really get what I grew up in. Like, it's just a well, vastly different thing. Okay, so I have a question. Sure. Um, I currently live in the North Druid Hills area oh, by of Emory? Atlanta. By Emory? Um, I guess. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out. I mean, it's really hard to move to a new city during this time because it's like we're still getting over COVID. Yeah. And so, like, I haven't really explored the city. I've gone to the local Whole Foods and I've gone to the local uh, Target. <laughs> have, you done, have you done Edgewood yet? What? Okay. Whoa. Edge, Edgewood? Oh, we got to take you to Atlanta. I don't know. We gotta I don't take know. You to Atlanta. But here's Jamila, the thing. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm very, very excited. I'm very, very excited because when I first moved to New York, I was 27 years old. So yeah. I was like well into my adult years. And I had never been to New York before I moved there. But I was really excited because I felt like I knew all the streets from from rap songs. I was going to say, you lived somewhere Cameron rapped about. Like, you should No, do that. but that's what I'm saying. I felt like I lived, like, I would run into, like, Willoughby and Myrtle and Nostra Nav, and I felt like I knew New York. And it's the same way I feel about Atlanta. Like, I, you know, I see College Park, I yeah. see East Point, and I'm like, I feel like I know New Atlanta. Oh, we got to take you on a tour. But I've though. never, but I haven't really, like, admittedly, yeah. I haven't really explored. We got to take you on a tour sooner okay. than later. Matter of fact, that might okay. be some content we film. We okay. take Jamila around Atlanta yes. to Atlanta. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Please. So, uh, so yeah. Let's so talk about your background. Like you know, you definitely have a vast background when it comes yeah. to media. Um, how when did you first yeah. when did you first get the notion that you wanted to get involved in media? Okay, so growing up, I grew up. I'm a kid of the '90s. How old, if you don't mind me asking, how old? Oh, are you? I don't mind either. I am 43. I'm okay. turning. Matter of fact, I turned 43 December 4th this year. So oh, I'm you're a sad. Oh, yeah. December 4th, 1978. I'm a okay. Jay Z sad. Uh, yeah, shit. I'll have the same <laughs> birthday. Um, I'm December 19th, 1986. Okay, so. So, you know, I don't remember the 80s at all. I think my earliest memory is like 1992, but I was definitely a child of the 90s. I, I was you. I was 10 in 96, you know, so I remember everything. And uh, growing up, I used to watch MTV a lot, like, mm -hmm. a, like all day. And because I watched it all day, I was watching like 90s alternative grunge music, but I was also watching 90s hip hop. Yeah. And I was seeing like I Dallas De Leon, um, uh, 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 Dallas. You remember I Dallas? Oh, I had a crush on I Dallas. I, right. What you mean? I Dallas, <laughs> Kennedy, Bill Bellamy, like doing MTV jams, What's that and dope? then and then watching. Um, I forget what Matt Penfield do. 120 minutes at night, and so I oh, knew the, the Rock. The Rock. Yeah, yeah. I I loved all kinds of music, and I knew when I grew up, there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to be an MTV VJ, VJ, and that shit doesn't even exist anymore. Representation you know what I'm saying? so matters. Like I was like that with media too. Like, I wanted oh. to be 
an MTV so VJ. Bad. There was no question about it. It was what I was going to do. And then I remember being a kid and looking up like, okay, if I want to do this, what do I need to do? And everything pointed towards like getting a degree in mass communications. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'll do that. And then I went to college, got a degree in mass comm. When I left school, it was like I needed a job right away. And the local CBS station in Richmond, Virginia, I went to VCU. Shout outs to VCU. Shout out to VCU. Um, but I went to VCU and I majored in mass comm and I ended up getting a job at the local CBS station. And then like, I don't know, graduating in 2008, it was one of those things where it was like the market had crashed. And like, if you had a good job, it was like you stayed in it and when you're in working in television, it's like you want to climb the corporate ladder. And like I started out as a production assistant, then I wanted to be an associate producer, then I wanted to be a producer. And it was just, I kind of got stuck doing news and I got away from like, you know, honestly, to be a VJ, if I had the guidance, I would have been like, you know what, don't go to school. Buy a good camera mm -hmm. and film and yourself and just mm -hmm. be a VJ and just put that shit on you. Imagine if I did that when YouTube, I mean, I was in college when YouTube started. I was in college from 2004 to 2008. So like, I really could have just been a VJ. <laughs> I really could have just put my shit out on YouTube. And I mean, it's, it's not too late to do that now, no, but it's no. harder to do that now. And, yeah. and I, I honestly, I hustled backwards in media for, real, for a really long time. I just kept trying to get the next position and get the next position. And then I looked around and I was like, I'm not interested in any of this shit. I'm interested in music. I'm interested in cannabis. I'm interested in, you know, um, pop culture and entertainment and movies and TV and like, how can I do more of that and less of what I'm currently doing? Although what I was currently doing was like great to talk about at yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's yeah, like, definitely. oh, you work at CBS, baby. And it looks like it looks Good like you job. did something. It does. It who does. Don't, who don't do it? It does. But I I would say to anyone who's in my position where you feel like you're stuck in um in a job that you don't want to be at um. The one thing that working at CBS did give me was clout mm. in a weird way, because like now I can talk about weed, but I worked at CBS News, you know? So it was like that weird kind of like clout um, that it gave me. And it taught me how to navigate certain spaces and people, you know, because yeah. I wasn't used to being around really uptight, you know, like suits. Uh, oh. But it, I still don't like being around those kinds of people, but at either. least I learned kind of like, okay, how to deal with those types of personalities. I like that. You know, and clearly we're Sagittarius. Yes. Um, because when I, when I graduated. Uh, well, we people give us such a hard rap. Girl. I feel like we're the most fun sign. Well, easy, easy, man. Come, come <laughs> kick it with a Sag. I'm listening because when you graduated in 08, at that point, I actually had my first print story. I had my first print story in 2007 because okay. I yeah. graduated college a couple of years prior to that. So I'm sitting there like, um, but when I got out of school, and this is 01, when I got out of school, I had the choice, like you had said, you were supposed to go through this certain ladder. I wanted to go yeah. through the, um, the print side. I wanted to go write for the Charlotte Observer or write for Charlotte Magazine. And then I um, started interning there and I realized I didn't want to do any of those things. Yes. And what I did was start my own website called Last Word Online. This was in 2004. And I just started doing these stories. And um, before you know it, Koch Records, um, all these record labels started sending me these ideas of stories and stuff like that. Yep. And I said to myself the same thing you said. Maybe I didn't need this degree. Maybe I just should have waited it out and started a website. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think uh, college, it's nice. It's the clout thing. It's yeah. like if I would advise anyone, I would say, you know, go for a year. So you can get the experience yeah. of having been, and then you know. Um, Unless you want to be a doctor, like like yeah, go, well, go no, for no, a no, real no. reason. Go, like if you yes. do a media. Like yes, <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. If you want, unless you want to be a doctor, but like if you want to do media, I say just do it, and yeah. I say that about anything. A lot of times, so now I work currently work in podcasting, mm. and uh, a lot of people ask me like, how do I get into podcasting? And I'm like, just do it, do it. just do it. But then also listen to a lot of podcasts. And um, and now, actually, because of COVID, because everything went remote, I used to be like, oh, well, you know, invest in equipment, invest in equipment. I have expensive equipment that I don't even use now because everything is remote. So I use like software, remote recording software that like if you have the right setup, if you have a good mic, yep. if you have like a good the whole thing. This is like off subject, but like the whole thing about making a good podcast um is uh is containment of sound you know so like replicate if you're at home replicate a studio as best as you can go into your you know closet 
and you know make if this oh any space in your house where the ceiling's kind of low and get a mic and have your laptop and go on you know a um, squad cast and oh. connect with your friend and do a podcast like just do it just do it it's like it's um the, uh, the hardest part is doing it. And then also the hardest part is being consistent. consistent and that's hard. why I love c- cash color ca- cannabis. Cause I know <laughs> that I can, you know, every Tuesday I'm going to hear some really interesting people and some really interesting Consistency stories. Consistency is the, the, the key, but I definitely yeah. agree with you on just doing it. You know, at some point you gotta, um, you have ideas that really are marketable. Like when I was doing last word online, it was doing my own website out of Charlotte, North Carolina and doing this out of your, your, your apartment. This is like two, 2001 to 2004 caught the attention of magazines in New York. And next yeah. thing you know, I actually have a job writing for all these other other publications. But I don't know if I would have ever did that if I just would have stuck in Charlotte Post. I mean, you know what I mean? Right, I don't know if right. I, that ever would have Yeah, happened. no, fast track. I say fast track to your interests. Like, really, there's, you know, like, I think there's some schools where they say, like, what are you interested in? And you write down all your interests and yeah. they're, like, figure out a way to make it into a career. And it's like, that's just, it's just true. It's like, you know, even when I was working at CBS, I worked at CBS News and MSNBC. And while I was there is when I saw other black people who worked there who were senior producers. They were like, had been in the game for a long time, way ahead of me, but they looked miserable. Mm-hmm. Like they looked like they hated their job. And so right then and there, I was like, okay, what do what, what's the job that I wish I had? And I said, I wish that I could make a website that's about all of my interests. I want to write about music. I want to write about cannabis. I want to write about um, movies and TV. And in my mind, I was like, well, you know, maybe I can get hired at BuzzFeed to do this. Maybe I can get hired at like The Fader or, or, you know, what's another complex? Maybe complex will pay me to write about this shit. And like, I would send out pitches and (laughs) no one would ever read them, you know? And so then it was like, why don't I just do it? Why don't I just build it myself? And like, that's where Hi, How Are You comes from. That's what I ask. It's really just the site of my dreams. It's the site that I wish existed. It um, is centered around uh, weed culture and cannabis culture. And it features, you know, mostly black people, but predominantly people of color. And um, and it's it's there's nothing informative <laughs> and it really, I say it's not an aspirational site. You know, you you, you don't go to HiHowAreYou.com to find out the 10 best uses for CBD. <laughs> or, you know, like, no, it's no, just, no, no, no. you're not going to find out the no. difference between indica and sativa. It's like, I come from a place where you kind of already know the difference. Yeah. And you're just, I, I my, my, my three best performing articles are the, the best full length concerts you can find on YouTube. Uh, why it's okay to lie on your resume and uh, cannabis sweet potato pancakes, cannabis infused sweet potato pancakes. Those are my three best performing articles. That actually sounds good. It, it, oh yeah, my God. Go, go look up the, uh, <laughs> go to hi, how are you.com and look at my sweet potato recipe. That's a dope origin story, man. Like you, so you basically made the website, like you said, you made the website you wanted to see. You yeah. Did the thing be that you the to change be. you want to see yeah. in the world. But I mean, honestly, it's like sometimes, you know, I do it and I'm like, I'm not getting the numbers that like this site is getting or like uh, this is taking too long or, you know, this is daunting. Is anybody ever even reading this? And it feels like, why am I doing this? And then you'll get some random ass person who's like, I found your site and I work for this company. And like, can you come do this speaking engagement? And I'm like, holy shit, maybe a lot of people aren't reading it, but like the you never know who's going to see it. It's who is watching it. You never yeah. know who's going to see it. I've gotten some amazing opportunities. Like I might not have the numbers, but like I'm ready. It's like the preparedness. It's mm-hmm. like the site is good. It's proofread. It's ready <laughs> for whoever you know needs comes a story ac- or needs some or needs something similar to what you you already delivering and, right here. Right, and whoever just comes across it, you know, like I think someone found the site just from seeing my sticker posted. Um, somewhere downtown and looked it up and was like, hey, this girl would be great for this, you know? So, I mean, honestly, that's how I got the uh, the uh, 
Grass is Greener opportunity. Grass is Greener is a, a Fab Five Freddy documentary. Yeah, that you were actually part of that I didn't realize because <laughs> I haven't actually seen the documentary. I, I, I try to be as honest as possible about yeah. that. I have never seen Grass is Greener. It's for personal reasons. Ro I, know, I know. It's like, but uh, even if you have to hate watch it. Yeah. yeah, it's not personal. Like, I don't like it. It's just that yeah, I was no. already working on my own thing and I don't like... I don't like feeling like I'm watching something that's going to inspire me to do yeah. something because I don't want to feel like I'm taking from something. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I definitely get it. But um, you did. You were in it. Did they spell your name right? I Yeah, they did. Okay. I was just making sure because I was like, did they spell her <laughs> name right? Like, did they, did they? Actually, you know what? I take that back. I, do, I might have had a credit at the end of the mm -hmm. movie, but like, you know how they do like the lower third? The lower third. They only correct. did the lower third for the famous people. I don't think I got a lower third. I think I was just a, like a face. Oh no. In the, <laughs> in the documentary, you know, like, but, but you, it was a great experience because Fat Five Freddy did put it together. It was, it and was he definitely was my a great neighbor. Concept. I didn't realize this till he was like, Hey, we're going to do like a reshoot of something. Can you come over? Uh, can you come to this address? And I looked at the address and I was like, that is around the corner from my house. We are neighbors. Yeah. New York's a wild place. Like me, and, I was is. telling you about Branson. Me and Danny, that's not my boy Danny, Danny Digital. Me and Danny Digital went to Harlem to go interview Branson and I was sitting there going through Harlem and I was like, it was, oh my gosh, it was like, that was my first time in Harlem, Harlem. Like, I miss you know, it not so a, not much. A, not, not being a tourist or nothing. We was in a park where we was in show. Yeah. We was even supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we was in that type of park. Yeah. Doing these, doing these type of interviews. But I loved yeah. it, man. I love I, New York. I miss Harlem so much. Yeah. I spent, it was, honestly, it's the best eight years of my life. Like, New York was wild. Like, I mean, I honestly went there to have a good ass time. Met my husband there. Got Congratulations. Married. Thank you. Got married. Um, Did you have a good apartment? Oh, we had a great apartment. Okay, okay. In fact, our apartment was amazing. It was a two bedroom. Um, and because it was rent controlled, oh. it was 1700 applause <laughs> rent control <laughs> it was rent control and it was 17 apartment uh, or 1700 and i remember being like if i can't leave i can't leave new york yeah. like i can't leave new york not if, that apartment no but i was like i can't i was like if we leave this apartment we can't leave like there's nowhere else we could go like yeah. this apartment we have to hang on to it with two hands but then i got pregnant during the pandemic and we needed like a bigger space and um I, the only place we could afford the kind of house we wanted was in the South or the Midwest. And I was like, I'm not going Midwest. And I was like, and the only city I would ever live in in the South is Atlanta. And because Gucci's there. The funny and part is the Midwest is so, I used to work for apartments.com. The Midwest is so cheap. And you can get so much. It is so cheap, much. but I don't want to live <laughs> That's there. why. That's why it's so cheap and it's so much. Yeah. Nobody actually wants to go to I Nebraska or nowhere like that. No shot. Or no, even no like Nebraska. Indiana or Ohio. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, I, but I didn't even want to go anywhere in the South. And then I was just like, well, Atlanta, I could do Atlanta. Yeah, Gucci so we, Exact. Oh my gosh, I, I was the biggest Gucci fan in college. Are you still a Gucci fan? Oh yeah, absolutely. But I mean, it was like I it it peaked in college, okay. like 2000, 2007, 2008. So you were still Gucci. heavy set Gucci. Heavy, yes, okay. yes, yes. Heavy set Gucci. Absolutely, absolutely. There, there's levels Free of Gucci, Gucci like there was man. levels of of Luther, like there was skinny <laughs> Luther, there's curl right, Luther. Right, yeah, there's, right. there was levels of Luther. Prison Gucci was prison my Gucci. favorite. Prison yeah. Gucci. I interviewed Gucci when he came out of prison the first time. Prison Gucci is cool as hell. I bet. Pretty, I, prison Gucci was cool as hell. But I mean, Atlanta just, in, in general, just has, like, the craziest, craziest, craziest music scene. Like, even with, like, DeBrat and, and Jermaine Dupri and, like, Funkify. Like, just early, early, early. Oh, but you're into and, like, rock, too. You know, they have a... Oh, a I definitely love rock. Have, They definitely have a yeah, rock scene. Yeah, I now. think um, uh, there's this group called Modest Mouse that's based out in Seattle. Mm -hmm. But they like built up their shit in Atlanta. I was about like to say, isn't Modest Mouse is from Atlanta? I was about to be no, real shocked. No, they're not from Atlanta, <laughs> but they came, you know, a lot of times people will come here to to break, yeah. to, you know, get a following and everything. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. That's hella dope, man. And I was, I was feeling a little bad because like I moved here in December and then New York legalized <laughs> like right after I fucking left. I was pissed, but but, you're, um, but, happy but for them. the great thing is your mom. Yes, yes I am. I your am. mom. So talk to us about that. We go, you know, Mother's Day just passed. We I wish Mother's Day was today. We could have it could have been a whole doper it, it, mother, mom. It's episode. okay. <laughs> it, this is the Mother's Day recap. Yes. Um, <laughs> it was weird because it, it's like your whole life. Mother's Day is this thing that you forget about, and then you're like, oh shit, I got to buy my mom a gift. Mm -hmm. And then this year, I was like, 
what are you getting me for Mother's Day? It's like the tables <laughs> had turned, you know? Like I'm a, like, this is my first Mother's Day. Like, what's going to happen? You know, it was just, I mean, it was, it was, being a mom has been the hardest shit. I'm not going to lie. Like, it's really hard. And I think that our moms and the moms before that, they made it look so easy because they took it on the chin. It was like, this is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm, you know, this is what I do. This is my kid. This is like, you know, but like I, for me, I like to complain about things. It's how I get through life. And I have so many. It's just, it's like I was pregnant during a pandemic. I had a crazy hard labor, natural labor. And then oh. I have then I have my baby. And it's like my whole body's changed. Like I gained 60 pounds and I still have 30 pounds left to go. And it's like I look different. I feel different. I'm, my baby wakes up still. She's six months. Oh. Shout out to you, Kimi. She's my... <laughs> It's my heart. Does she have an Instagram page yet? No, uh. absolutely. Not. I try to keep my baby off Instagram. Like yeah. I'll post something and then I'll delete it. Like I just don't really want her on there because we grew up without uh, any kind of internet presence. Oh. And I just want that for her, at least until she can kind of decide that she wants to do it. I feel you. Like I you feel know? like parents nowadays, it's, it's almost like the first, it's, it's the first thing they want to do. Let's see if we can get this kid to go viral. Well, you can get a mad following off your kid. Like seriously, there's just cute kids and it's like, I I follow I follow kid Instagram pages. I know it sounds creepy because I'm a grown woman, but it's like some kids are like cute and, and they're you just, funny and they're funny, yeah, right? Funny. Right, just right. So have a heart. Kids are funny. Man. They're hilarious, <laughs> and so um, yeah, it's just it's been a huge adjustment. I mean, she's still waking up in the middle of the night, so like I get up every day at three a.m. 4 a.m. and I feed her then I got to put her back and that's like a 30 minute to an hour ordeal and then I and I work full-time and um I also am trying to do hi how are you and I'm also trying to adjust to a new city you're and trying to smoke like, weed like when do you get a chance to smoke <laughs> well, <I laughs> it's actually, down the middle of so I breastfed for a really long time and um and uh then I weaned her off of breast milk, and I think that's when I made the decision to start smoking weed again because before that, I hadn't smoked since December 2019. And I know it was December 9, 2019 because it was my birthday, and I, uh, <laughs> and I was really faded, and I was in New Orleans. And, uh, and then I you know, made the conscientious decision that I was going to try to, to conceive, and... Um, and so I stopped smoking and then I got pregnant. And, you know, there are women out there who smoke while they're pregnant. There are women out there who smoke while they're trying to conceive. There are women out there who smoke when they're breastfeeding. And, like, I don't see anything wrong with it. Like, I really don't. Like, there is data to support the fact that, you know, like, breast milk has cannabinoids yeah, in it. And cannabinoid receptors. And so, like, I just, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's just as a, as a, I'm a first time mom, right? And I'm, I've never been so careful in my life. Like we're Sagittarians, like we are the reckless sign. We don't give a fuck. Like, so like, let's just do it. Let's just go, man. And like, now that I have a kid, I'm so cautious. And as a black woman, like, I don't, I'm not, I don't play around with CPS. Like I'm not trying to get oh, my kids take, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like black women disproportionately will get their kids snatched for small ass offenses. Like, traces of marijuana in your mm -hmm. system and I just don't play around with it and I remember the whole time I was pregnant like every time I went to get a checkup I had to pee in a cup and I'm like is this for my health or is this like just, are they going to turn this into the state you know just yeah, just yeah. that paranoia is really really scary yeah. and so uh I smoked for the first time like a few weeks ago and I don't know if you saw the video there's like a video on my Instagram page where I smoked for the first time and I was like so happy but then my lungs just like like I just was coughing. I'm proud of you. So hard. You, you got a chance <laughs> to get That first no, but that first like toke after a year was just like it was rough. I need to like I, my my lungs need to get back in shape. Well, they're getting back there soon. Yeah, like, no, no, no. So I, do you still? Yeah. But do you still? Are you still trying to find pockets of time where you can consume, or is that not e even on the radar? For you right no, now? I mean I love being high, and <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really do. I love I love being high, and it's like my creative time, and it's also. I do a lot of, um, uh, I think it was a Bob Marley who said like the herb reveals yourself to you yes. or something like that. Yeah. I, it really, for me, that, that is the truth. Like I will smoke first thing in the morning, baby sleep, and I will hop in the shower and then I'll just map out everything I have to do th that day. 
and and like I can see it I can see all of my tasks that day and then you know I'll get out of the shower write it all down fix breakfast it's very much a routine for me and um and yeah it's I mean being a mom is all about routine anyway so it's like yes I find my times to smoke I find my times to stretch I find my times to write I and I work full time and then I find my times to do this and you know like it's you uh it's you can get it all done. You just have to prioritize. Ah, oh, moms are amazing, man. <laughs> it's really, it's, I, I'm amazed by women in general. Just yeah. the fact that our bodies have the capability to do that shit is like, it's phenomenal. Girl, I was thinking about how when I was, and I hate to say how old this actually took me, but this is mid middle school, how much I thought black women were magical. Because I assume all black women can sing and you can just grow your hair when you felt like it. <laughs> like, seriously, like, I thought you could grow your hair when you felt like it. And I remember getting this lecture from these girls on the back of the bus in middle school because I said, in Vogue's hair was their hair. And it's almost like they gathered me around. Like, let me, uh, so he doesn't understand. <laughs> let's, let me, let's all explain to him we're all at the same time that that's not how that works. And it just well, popped I remember, my whole bubble. I remember, like, uh, you know, no. I mean, just because I'm a woman and I know about like weaves and and braids and all this shit. But like, I remember watching Martin and how hard of a time Martin gave Pam for wearing a weave. And I was just like, what? She likes a different look. But it was like one of those things where it's like, you know. Also, I grew up with like DJ Cool, and it's like, you know, let me clear my throat comes on. And it's like, if you got real hair, real fingernails, <laughs> and it was like, it was, you know, like it was like, oh, you you shouldn't. But now it's it's. Every, you know, like there's like multi-million dollar businesses it's, on that Instagram that almost everybody selling has. hair and yeah, absolutely. I've bought so many wigs off Instagram. Girl, I might put some. I might put wigs <laughs> on Atlanta's clothing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Go copy off some wigs, man. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Sell some lashes. I know lash lashes. I've noticed are a big thing in Atlanta. Like women with the Girl, big, with like, the big ones, with like the, they're waving at you. Yes, with yeah. the crazy lashes. Yeah. I'm like, I tell my husband all the time. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna get some. They put them on their I car too. If you've ever noticed, win, like you'll see some, you'll see some on the headlights. Like they'll have the, the that's, plastic. That's yeah. too much. I hate that. <laughs> I hate those people seriously. Um, Chronic Talk. I was on your YouTube and I was watching Chronic Talk. Yes. I saw that. I, and one, I was I was impressed because I never saw Visine Queen ever do anything other than be on Instagram. So yes. I'm like, I more wanted to see that. I was like, she can have a whole conversation? Yes, yes. Okay, so Visine Queen, uh, she's an artist out of uh, New York City. Her, uh, her name's Lisa. But um, she's amazing. She's a, a great artist. She's funny. She's a Sag too. Facts. And I just, I followed her on Instagram and I just really was like, I like this girl. I like this girl a lot. And um, invited her to be on the show and she was great. And the funny thing is, is like, I haven't done, I've only done a few episodes of, uh, of Chronic Thoughts. And, Chronic um, Thoughts, excuse me. That's okay. I've only done a few episodes of Chronic Thoughts because of consistency. I just, it's a lot of work to put yeah. a video together and to edit it and everything. So I definitely need to do more. But what I noticed was like the interviews that I did with women were just phenomenal, like just far way better than the interviews I did with men. And I don't know why that was, but it was like I would do interviews with men where it was like I'd have them on camera and we'd be smoking you know because the whole thing with conic thoughts is like it's a conversation between me and another person and we're smoking the whole time and like I felt like all the men I had on my show would just get really introspect like they would just get really like self-conscious like you know they would get high and then it was just kind of like they would mm. just kind of like shut down. That's interesting. Yeah, it was. It was. I mean, maybe it was just the people that I had interviewed, but my best conversations were with women. Oh, I like the conversation you had with Visine Queen. Yeah. And it actually brought up some questions I wanted to ask you tonight because I sure. liked how you started off your interview with you had some questions that you got a chance to ask her. Yeah. So I was watching those and I was like, man, I'm gonna do that for her when she get here. Okay. Me and Jamila are gonna get into some questions. I'm ready. So I got some questions for you. Um, first question. What do you think you did in the 90s that if you had to explain it to someone right now would sound super insane? Oh, hands down, aim. Oh, uh, hands <laughs> down. Because we have text, we have, we have text messaging, yeah. right? So it's like if you had to go to like a teenager and say back in the day, we used to like live for hearing that aim message go off because it was like oh, someone you got a message yeah someone messaged me and then you had a screen name and then you were talking to strangers sometimes in chat rooms and like it was just wild wild west but it was it was like a mixture of twitter because you could find like 
the 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 Nas chat room or like you could find that and you're just talking to to strangers I mean I, I I miss this but at one point a lot of people that I that I'm friends with they were on the okay player chat room I remember or those. like the Nike talk chat room yeah. or like chat rooms like you know like trying to explain that to like a kid now or you know trying to explain AOL instant messaging to kids who have like cell phones and text messaging is nothing and DMing is nothing. It's like it's they probably are like what the fuck what 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 for? There's so many things I wish I could that would sound insane like CD ROMs like the fact that you had to had a CD ROM come to your house in bulk. You know what I'm saying? In order to use the internet, with hours of, of hours of internet time was on there, that yes, I existed through but that I mean, time. But it was it was a time, and there's joy in it. It was like there was joy in. Um, I mean, like, I'm, this is, you know, whatever. But, like, you remember when you would, like, watch porn and like, 1999, and, like, you're watching the, like, the shit load? Oh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> you're watching, like, the, and you're like, ooh, like, it's, <laughs> it's Are we going to do this? Are we going to do this? I'm 75% there, you know? Like, that's, that's just, it was a time, and, and there was joy in it. In, in hindsight. Oh, girl, in, in 2000, <laughs> I literally I literally called myself downloading a porn that was a, exactly one minute and 20 seconds long. <laughs> I, start, I started this download off. It was at 1%. When I say me and my boys, oh we were still God. in college, me and my boys went to the club, came back to the apartment at 4 a.m., and it was still loading. <laughs> did you? There's an age gap between us, but did you download the Pam and Tommy Lee video? Never. I existed. Okay. Never. I was not that dude. I was not that dude. In the night, I was a kid, but I remember oh. it was a thing, and it was like going to like LimeWire and Napster and like just trying to get you know whatever. Oh, let me tell you something. I'm pretty sure it doesn't exist anymore. But in Boston, we had this thing called the Combat Zone. It was downtown. It was like every sex store. There was like actually, I'm really dating myself at this point. There was a time when there used to be theaters. You could go in and actually oh. watch one. I was at the tail end of that shit, but they used to still exist. I remember going into the into the combat zone and because I'm tall, they thought I was older. Being able to walk into the stores and just buy the porns. And like right. so I'm like, I don't know if kids still do that now. Like do y'all still walk no, the they big don't boxes like go that to store they go online. Like I think you know it's just there's Oh you're missing an experience. It's almost like going to Tower like or going to Blockbuster. You're missing a <laughs> right, whole experience right, if right. you don't walk into a store and see some guy try to talk, hide his back to you because he has a jacket on and you don't know what the hell he's doing with his jacket oh on my gosh. <laughs> as you try to buy your porn. There's there's just there's so many relics of I mean, I was watching some show on Netflix recently where like one of the people was old. They were it was a reality show, and like some of the people are who they say they are, and some of the people are catfish. Was it Circle? Yes, the Circle. circle. Yes, and one of the guys was old, and he came in the chat room like, "Hey guys, what's the four one one?" And these kids were like, four one one." Oh like, yeah, what that's the another fuck one. Are you that's talking about? One. And I'm like, "Oh, four one one is the number you used to dial to find out information." Look, let me tell you. Ah, how Don't about, even how about know. calling movie? Don't phone? even know. Oh <laughs> yes. Oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. a movie phone and being geeked movie about it like yeah we about to go to the movies hold on let me call 1900 film or when you <laughs> or when you're trying to find out what to watch on TV and you're looking for like what's coming on BET but you missed it it oh. was scrolling up the the channels the were scrolling God, up the guy used to go to you, you had yeah. to go to channel 2 Oh, the book. You, 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 know, you was fancy. <laughs> you was fancy. I could tell they, I could tell they was a fancy home. You specifically bought TV Guide to find out what was going yeah, on. Yeah, that was another thing. Like, I remember, shoot, it was just so much stuff that's happened now yeah. that if I explained it to you, like, if I said to a kid, I would come at midnight, I would hear the national anthem play on TV, and then TV was done. <laughs> you know what I'm okay, saying? Yeah, <laughs> and then TV was see, done until I'm, 5 I o'clock. mean, I was always of an age where, like, after a certain time, there was always information. TV was never done. It was yeah. like there was just infomercials on infomercials. Oh, yeah, And, like, I, I mean, when I was growing up, I remember a big infomercial was, um, uh, uh, what was it? It was, like, you can call. There were people who would submit videos Oh man, I'm like this is crazy, and I'm I'm hoping this is like a real thing and not a fever dream. But like, <laughs> there was like you could at late at night you could submit a video of yourself, and you're like, "Hi, I'm Jamila. I'm 34 years old, and I love dancing and music." And then and then at the bottom was like a hashtag number, and if you were interested in me, you could call this service and hit my hashtag. Oh, creep and, levels like, on a thousand, and like. <laughs> talk to me or something like I don't know if I'm I feel like I remember 
seeing shit like that when I was little. That probably, was like that probably video happened. Video chat. Yeah. That, that probably happened. Yeah. I'll tell you one more thing. I, I know the, the commercial's probably on YouTube. One thing, one more thing I remember before I get to the next question was um, Columbia House Records. Yes. I don't know if y'all remember. Every CD was a penny. Girl. Like, like my wife asked me yesterday. She said, so when did you ever, how much did you end up having to pay them? I said, pay them what? I assumed it was a penny and I never paid them anything. You know I, I never paid them a, a single dollar. Matter of fact, I remember like speaking about Columbia House and even thinking oh about this God. question. I thought about how similar Columbia House Records is to how we do music nowadays. Yeah. Because what I do now is rather than order 20 CDs and only keep one or throw the rest of them away, I go on Spotify or Tidal and I save a bunch of albums I think I want to listen to mm -hmm. that I realize I don't want to hear this shit. Like yeah. I didn't want to have like I one of the CDs I bought was Rome back in the day. Rome had a song called like it makes me wanna sing and every time I think about your love it drives me crazy. That sounds really familiar. I didn't want to hear nothing but that song and I didn't want to hear that song by the time I got the CD. So, like, you, got <laughs> the, so you got the CD on I Columbia got the House. CD. It was one of the twenty CDs they sent me. Yeah, you got, you it was like twenty CDs for a dollar. I don't know how they exist. But I wasn't old enough to do that on my own. I remember my mom was like, "Don't you dare oh, girl, sign I used up to, for that." I used to get every magazine I could and just tear all the. Out. <laughs> it go hell. It go hell. Scams. All right, next one. Oh, so boys and men or Jodeci? Scams. Boys and men or Jodeci? Yeah. Jodeci. That's not even a like. Okay. A fair fight. Because there's a real judgment for me, like how you pick this. Like, like I really want to know how people feel about. But this a show. lot of times, Philly kid over there looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> but a lot of times, I um, and then with '90s r and B, I don't even know who sings the songs. Like, it could be like one of four people who sings the songs. Like, I don't know if it was H-Town or Jodeci or who sings like, baby, won't you just stay? Oh, that's Jodeci. Or, okay, okay, that's Jodeci. Yeah. But like, I don't, I mean, it's like a blur to me. Girl, but it's Jodeci. like, but I, I know for sure I like Jodeci more than um, Boyz II Men. Not knocking Boyz II Men. Boyz II Men is phenomenal. But if you look at my iTunes library, there's more Jodeci. Than that's what's up. <laughs> Tell me something that musically that you've discovered recently that you never thought you would have ever listened to before oh I, we talked about this earlier i like casey musgraves she's a i thought that was you singing <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i had casey musgraves on my instagram story uh that was not me singing uh she's a country singer and um she sings about like sex and weed and She's just like, she's like the anti-country singer. She's so more Willie Nelson, Dolly Parton than like any of those other people, than like Tim McGraw and Faith Hill and all those people. So like, I don't know. I just, I, she reminds me of like old Johnny Cash, like that storytelling kind of. Kind of so so edge to it. Yeah, I, I, I like her. Um, but as far as like the music I normally listen to, I really like Drum. Well, he goes by Shelly now. But, um, he changed his name. He changed his name, but Shelly is his legal name. Oh. Uh, so he's just going by, you know, his his legal name. And then um, who else? Who else? Big Baby Drum. Yeah, Big Baby Drum is now Shelly. Um, I don't know. I find myself getting stuck listening to a lot of just. I, I find myself stuck in my own music library. So, you know, it's very rare. I think one time, actually, when we first moved to Atlanta, I was driving in the car with, uh, with my husband, and I was like, you know what? Let's pull up Apple new hip-hop songs. And I lasted, like, I lasted, like, 10 minutes. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. And then I, I think I have this theory that I can only listen to rappers that are uh, 30 and over. Mm. That's you know? a, that needs to be a music category. Rap I really thirty and, 30 over. and over. Like yeah. I mean, like if you look at somebody, even like um, uh, the baby, is that his name? Yeah. Because no, yeah. there's baby and then there's the baby. The baby. But uh, with the baby, he's twenty nine, and like you know, two chains, Rick Ross, uh, Drake, um, just a lot of the rapper Freddie Gibbs, a lot of the rappers that I listen to, all Griselda. Like I just, I just like. Over 30. <laughs> she, had Griselda, she had a new house listening to Conway and, and nursing a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's one thing that I haven't. I think, you know, I was I was talking to someone about this recently, and I was like, I think I need to find the clean versions of all my favorite songs because I'm not going to stop listening to them. You're not but I should clean probably. Either. No, no, there's clean versions. It's going to be hard. It, it, no, but they're like, if you go on iTunes and you look up, there's like the one with the E mm -hmm. and the explicit, <laughs> explicit. I'm explaining like yeah, I'm, I'm parental looking, guidance. I'm looking no, for the E. But, right. I mean, I want both versions, but I think when, when, uh, 
when you Kimi, I think when she gets to, to an age where she starts repeating things, I'm going to have to switch over to the mm-hmm. clean versions. But, yeah. You know, one, one thing I found in, you know, thanks to COVID, I spent a lot of time on YouTube, which I never thought I'd do. But I spent a lot of time on YouTube just finding new stuff. Like, I never thought that even existed. And recently, I found a genre of music I didn't know still existed. And right now, I can't get out of this at all. And it's blues. There, oh, yeah. There's new, it's called S- Southern Blues, New Soul. Yeah. Buddy, these guys are so are so ridiculous. Oh, yeah. No, okay, so my grandfather, my grandparents are from Chicago, right? And my grandma and my grandpa used to listen to blues all the time. And some of the songs they listened to were so ridiculous ridiculous like there was i mean like i'm sure you know you know the song stroking by yes. Paris Carter. Oh, of course famous right famous. like he was a big blues person but then also there was like uh this woman i think her name was like cheryl lee but she had some song called bill and it was about like how her husband left her for another guy. i mean it's just like the, the like the stories <laughs> are, are ridiculous and like they're they're very highly sexual a lot of them and you know uh, ain't they ain't they but but they're fun they're fun and they're I just, you know what, as what it is, it's like I just love black music as a whole, any facet of it, and I love going back and listening to, you know, um, even like funkadelic. Like there was just there's there's um, a song called "No Head No Backstage Pass" by Funkadelic that I really love, and that sounds real problematic. Yeah, in twenty twenty one, it does, it does, but it's like. I just love people, I love watching people, like, express themselves and not give a fuck. And, like, blues, uh, blues of, you know, yes, I haven't really listened. Is there, like, is blues a genre that, like, people are still doing? They are. Is Artist Big Rob, OB, okay. B- OB B- Bachana, I'm going to shout y'all out. LJ yes, Eccles. Yes. Man, there was a song I heard called um, Funky 40. Uh-huh. Where this dude was talking about how there's this girl I know, I don't even got to talk to her till Monday because I know by uh, Friday she's going to go to the club, spend all her money, and by Monday she's going to need this funky $40. And I'm going to see what she's going to do for this funky $40. And I was sitting there listening to the Hook like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> I love it's it. It's a song I didn't know I needed. I love it. Funky 40 is okay, actually I'm gonna, a real record. I'm going to have to listen to this episode again yeah. and notate the people you just mentioned. I might update my playlist and add Big Rob and all of them. I've been warned. My wife keeps telling me stop trying to force this on people, but <laughs> no, 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 I'm into it. I do love new jazz though. Like, there's a lot of great people in jazz. Uh, Christian Scott is a uh, uh, plays trumpet. Um, Braxton Cook, uh, I believe, also plays trumpet. Uh, Brent Burkhead plays saxophone. Like, there's a lot of young brothers playing and sisters like doing jazz music and they're doing a phenomenal job. And like, if you went, if you live in New York, you can go to the Blue Note, like any given friday and see like the greatest jazz performer and they're current they're new they're not like you know people from back in the day or like people who've had long careers like they're just getting started that's amazing man so we had a great conversation today i I learned a lot about you i'm glad you're a jodeci fan yes (laughs) i love jodeci i'm I'm so glad you said that because i was like man it's almost like asking somebody about jay-z or nas how how emphatic you say nas makes me say that man you're a loyal person because you can stick with somebody through a whole lot of downs you know know what i actually i uh i work on a podcast recently i work on a podcast and where nas was recently a guest and so as the producer I was in charge of crafting the questions and uh, we did a, like a, a this or that kind of session. And uh, one of the questions was beat wise, not lyrically, lyrics aside, rappers aside, beat wise. We asked this to Nas, what's the better song, Ether or Takeover? And he said Ether. And I was just like, he's just not there yet. No. <laughs> See, if you're he, not- he had to, no, but he was like, shout out to Kanye, you know, like, uh, you know, it was good, but I, Ether, and I was just like, he's just, you know, he's he's just not there yet. I don't want to drag that story back again. If y'all, <laughs> if y'all are fans of the podcast, you know how I feel. I love Nas, but Ether, I felt like at that point, 
Either was cool record, but at that point, we was just happy Nas got up. It was like watching somebody get knocked out over and over and over again by somebody, and you ain't never got up. You just got up at that point. That's why we cheered that record. I mean, I just, it's, I I don't have Ether on any of my playlists. Mm -mm. It was a time. He doesn't have, he doesn't have Ether on his playlist. Like, nah, stop playing. (laughs) (laughs) But then the other Ether or a question chat, oh, you know what? I might as well plug all my shit so yeah. i produce uh jalen rose's podcast for the new york post okay and it's called uh, jalen rose renaissance man and like please go listen to that because that brother needs some support like he's he's on the new york post for god's sake yeah. which is like a very conservative site but he's doing this this podcast where he has a bunch of different celebrities and most of them he's had rick ross he's had killer mike he's had nas and like one of the other questions that we asked nas was uh at this point in your life you're um you know i I think he's I think he's 50 or he's like close to 50 but like at this point in your life would you say that you're more Uchi Wally or are you more one Mike and he was like why can't I be both he was like Marvin Gaye was let's get it on and he was what's going on and I I was like ah such a good such a good answer such a good answer so yeah please listen to Jalen Rose's he's also Jalen Rose is a phenomenal human being and I love working with him and um yeah go go support him listen to his podcast as well shout out to Jalen Rose his barber stay on point like oh Andy Authentic that's another I keep pressing for us to do an Andy authentic episode that says andy authentic is his barber and he's out of connecticut and he's like a he's like he's like got the geometry on it's, it's serious like you yeah. ever see his, his lineup it's like yo yeah. applause to that brother yeah. whoever does his hair man <laughs> yeah it's crazy uh jamila thank you for coming through tonight thank you that for was an amazing conversation on. yeah absolutely want, for people to find you how can they find you if they want to come and learn more about you okay so um my instagram and twitter handles are the same it's at jamila zara that's j-a-m-e-l-a-z-a-r-h-a and then my website is hi how are you.com that's h-i-g-h how are you.com that's what's up. Have me on chronic uh, on chronic thoughts one day. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You got to break the streak because the men have been oh, not that, that great. I'll break that streak. I'll break okay. that streak. I'll break that streak. I got you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming through. And that's Cash Color Camp. It's a high level of conversation on live hip hop daily TV.